Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. This is LaShonda Janine Hearn. A year in the Bible. A daily Bible reading where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. Amen. Good morning. So we are in Deuteronomy 23, starting with verse 15, and we'll read 24, 25, and 26, ending with verse 19 and 26. Good morning. And then Luke 3, starting with verse 21, and then read chapter 4, ending at verse 13 in chapter 4. So good morning. So glory to God, glory to God. Are we praising the Lord God this morning because he is awesome. I got testimonies building, building, building for me to just burst at the seams with. Like God is amazing. <laughs> God is awesome. It's just so amazing. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, creator of heaven and earth, we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we just glorify you, Lord God Almighty. We are going to give to you what is due to you, the reverence that is due to you, Lord God, because you are the God that keeps promises. You are the God that pays bills. You are the God that Whatever we need, you are our Father and you do it for us. As long as we stay in righteousness with you, in obedience with you, staying in your word, staying connected, staying in a prayer life for you, Lord God, like you coming with blessings and favor, and we just thank you, Lord God, for it. We glorify you, Lord God. For all that you are doing, your healing hands are amazing. Healing the body of Christ all over the world. Healing the people of God. And we just thank you. Giving us miracles upon miracles. We just glorify you and we thank you, Lord God. We give you reverence. We honor you. We love on you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. We glorify you. And we just pray this in the presence of Jehovah, in the spirit of Jesus, Yahweh, in Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen, amen. If you have a specific prayer request when I come on and pray, don't hesitate to let me know what that is. Because right now I'm in a in, in just a, a grateful, thankful praising worshiping him um status that's that's where i'm at so if you need a specific prayer don't hesitate um to inbox me the the like today later you can inbox me or anything like that and let me know um if i could pray something specific um in the every morning in the morning um, when we get ready to read. So good morning. This is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. So share, tag, and invite because we want to get the gospel out there. We want to spread it out um, throughout our circles, um, people that we're connected to, to encourage them, inspire them, and motivate them to get into the words of God with us every single day. So we are in Deuteronomy 23 this morning, starting with verse 15. And do know that I read from the King James Version. I read from the King James Version, so if your version is different, that is okay. Just know that the wordings will be different.
All right, so Deuteronomy 23, starting with verse 15. Thou shalt not deliver unto his master the servant which is escaped from his master unto thee. He shall dwell with thee even among you in that place which he shall choose in one of thy gates, where it liketh him best. Thou shalt not oppress him. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow, for even both these are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother, brother usury of money, usury of vic victuals, usury of anything that is lent upon usury. Unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury, but unto thy brother thou shalt not lend upon usury, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all that thou settest thine hand to in the land whither thou goest to possess it. When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it. For the Lord thy God would surely require it of thee, and it would be sin in thee. But if thou shalt forbear to vow, it shall be no sin in thee. That which is gone out of thy lips thou shalt keep and perform, even a free will offering according as thou hast vowed unto the Lord thy God, which thou hast promised with thy mouth. When thou comest into thy neighbor's vineyard, then thou mayest eat grapes, thy field at thine own pleasure, but thou shalt not put any in thy vessel. When thou comest into the standing corn of thy neighbor, then thou may, mayest pluck, it, pluck the ears with thine hand, but thou shalt not move a sickle unto thy neighbor's standing corn. So good morning. This is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading, where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. And so we are in Deuteronomy, and we are moving on to chapter 24. When a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand, and send her out of his house. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the latter husband hate her, and write her a bill of divorcement, and giveth it in her hand, and sendeth her out of his house, or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife. After that she is defiled, for that is abomination before the Lord. And thou shalt not cause the land to sin which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. When a man hath taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war, neither shall he be charged with any business, but he shall be free at home one year, and shall cheer up his wife which he hath taken. No man shall take the neither, nether or the upper millstone to pledge, for he taketh a man's life to pledge. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel, and maketh merchandise of him, or selleth him, then that thief shall die, and thou shalt put evil away from among you. Take heed in the plague of leprosy, that thou observe diligently, and do according to all that the priests of the Levites shall teach you, as I commanded them, so ye shall observe to do. Remember what the Lord thy God did unto Miriam by the way, after that ye were come forth out of Egypt, 
When thou dost lend thy brother anything, thou shalt not go into his house to fetch his pledge. Thou shalt not, I mean, thou shalt stand abroad, and the man to whom thou dost lend shall bring out the pledge abroad unto thee. And if the man be poor, thou shalt not sleep with his pledge. In any case, thou shalt deliver him the pledge again when the sun goeth down, that he may sleep in his own raiment, and bless thee. And it shall be righteousness unto thee before the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not oppress an hired servant that is poor and needy, whether he be of thy brethren or of thy strangers that are in the land within thy gates. At his day thou shalt give him his hire. Neither shall the sun go down upon it, for he is poor, and setteth his heart upon it, lest he cry against the, the, thee unto the Lord, and it be sin unto thee. The fathers shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Thou shalt not pervert the judgment of the stranger, nor of the fatherless, nor take a widow's raiment to pledge. But thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee thence. Therefore I command thee to do this thing. When thou cuttest down thine harvest in thy field, and hast forgot a sheaf in the field, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, or for the widow, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hands. When thou beatest thine olive tree, thou shalt not go over the balls again. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. When thou gatherest the grapes of thine vineyard, thou shalt not glean it after. It shall be for the stranger, excuse me, for the fatherless, and for the widow. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt. Therefore, I command thee to do this thing. So good morning. This is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading, where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. Go ahead and share, tag, and invite someone um, to join us um, to get into the words of God every day. So we are in Deuteronomy, and we're moving on to chapter 25. All right, Deuteronomy 25. If there be a controversy between men and they come unto judgment, that the judges may judge them, then they shall justify the righteous, and condemn the wicked. And it shall be if the wicked man be worthy to be beaten, that the judge shall cause him to lie down and to be beaten before his face, according to his fault, by a certain number. Forty stripes he may give him, and not exceed, lest if he should exceed, and beat him above these with many stripes, then thy brother should seem vile unto thee. Thou shalt not muzzle the ox when he treadeth out the corn. If brethren dwell together and one of them die and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of a husband's brother unto her. And it shall be that the firstborn which she beareth shall succeed in the name of his brother which is dead, that his name be not put out of Israel. And if the man like not to take his brother's wife, then let his brother's wife go up to the gate unto the elders and say, My husband's brother refuses to raise up unto his brother a name in Israel. He will not perform the duty of my husband's brother. Then the elders of his city shall call him and speak unto him. And if he stand to it and say, I like not to take her, then shall his brother's wife 
come unto him in the presence of the elders and loose his shoes from off his foot and spit in his face and shall answer and say, so shall it be done unto that man that will not build up his brother's house. And his name shall be called in Israel, the house of him that hath his shoes loosed. And when men strive together, one with another, and the wife of the one draweth near for to deliver her husband out of the hand of him that smiteth him, and putteth forth her hand, and taketh him by the secrets, then shalt thou cut off her hand, thine eye shall not pity her. Thou shalt not have in thy bag divers weights, and great and a small. Thou shalt not have in thine house divers measures, a great and a small. But thou shalt have a perfect and just weight, a perfect and just measure shalt thou have, that thy days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. For all that do such things, and all that do unrighteously, are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way, when ye were come forth out of Egypt, how he met thee by the way, and smote the hindmost of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee, when thou was faint and weary, and he feared not God. Therefore it shall be, when the Lord thy God hath given thee rest from all thine enemies round about, in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that, th that thou shall blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven, thou shalt not forget it. Amen. So this is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading, where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. We are doing this together every morning at 530. And we are persevering and, and pushing through and making it happen. And we're finding that spending time with the Lord is just awesome. And rewarding within itself. I mean, to get to know God even more is is amazing. Um, I don't know about you, but I am loving it. Alright, so we're going to read Deuteronomy 26, 1 through 19. Actually, that's all of... 26. <laughs> All right, so Deuteronomy 26. And it shall be when thou art come in unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance, and possesses it, and dwellest therein, that thou shalt take of the first of all the fruit of the earth, which thou shalt bring of thy land that the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shall put it in a basket, and shall go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name there. And thou shalt go unto the priest that shall be in those days, and say unto him, I profess this day unto the Lord thy God, that I am come unto the country which the Lord swear unto our fathers for to give to us. And the priest shall take the basket out of thine hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord thy God. And thou shalt speak and say before the Lord thy God, As Serenian ready to perish was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there with a few, and became there a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians evil entreated us, and afflicted us, and laid upon us hard bondage. And when we cried unto the Lord God of our fathers, the Lord heard our voice, and looked on our affliction, and our labor, and our oppression. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and with an outstretched arm, 
and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders. And he hath brought us into this place and hath given us this land, even a land that floweth with milk and honey. And now behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land, which thou, O Lord, hath, hast given me. And thou shalt set it before the Lord thy God and worship before the Lord thy God. And thou shalt rejoice in every good thing which the Lord thy God hath given unto thee. And unto thine house, thou and the Levite and the stranger that is among you. When thou hast made an end of tithing all the tithes of thine increase the third year, which is the year of tithing, and hath given it unto the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, that they may eat within thy gates and be filled. Then thou shalt say before the Lord thy God, I have brought away the hollow things out of mine house, excuse me, and also have given them unto the Levite, and unto the stranger, to the fatherless, and to the widow, according to all thy commandments which thou hast commanded me. I have not transgressed thy commandments, neither have I forgotten them. I have not eaten thereof in my mourning, neither have I taken away aught thereof for any unclean use, nor given aught thereof for the dead. But I have hearkened to the voice of the Lord my God, and have done according to all that house that hast commanded me. Look down from thy holy habitation from heaven, and bless thy people Israel, and the land which thou hast given us, as thou swearest unto our fathers, a land that floweth with milk and honey. This day the Lord thy God hath commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments. Thou shalt therefore keep and do them with all thine heart, and with all thy soul. Thou hast avouched the Lord this day to be thy God, and to walk in his ways, and to keep his statutes, and his commandments, and his judgments, and to hearken unto his voice. And the Lord hath avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people, as he hath promised thee, and that thou shouldest keep all his commandments. And to make thee high above all nations, which he hath made in praise and in name and in honor, that thou mayest be an holy people unto the Lord thy God, as he hath spoken. Amen. So there are some words I'm going to go back and look up. And even study that some more uh, later. And I encourage you to do the same, like go back throughout the day, look up words, meditate on the word, and even study some more. Because uh, this is just the reading every morning at 530. We're getting through the Bible in one entire year, and we are doing the reading. And um, yes, I encourage you, inspire you, and motivate you to go back and even study more and spend more time with God. All right, so good morning. This is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading, where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. We just read Deuteronomy 23, starting with verse 15. We read 24, 25, and 26. And now we'll move on to Luke 3, starting with verse 21. So Luke 3, I actually have a bookmark for that one. All right, Luke 3, starting with verse 21. Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from 
heaven, which said, Thou art my beloved son, and thee I am well pleased. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli, which was the son of Matthat, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Malachi, which was the son of Janna, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Mattathias, which was the son of Amos, which was the son of Naum, which was the son of Esli, which was the son of Nage, Naji. I don't know how to say that <laughs> that word. Which was the son of Maath, which was the son of Mattathias, which was the son of Simei, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Joanna, which was the son of Resa, which was the son of Zerubbabel, which was the son of Salath. Salathiel, which was the son of Neri, which was the son of Malachi, Mel Malachi, which was the son of Adi, which was the son of Kosam, which was the son of Elmodam, which was the son of Ur, which was the son of Jose, which was the son of Eleazar, which was the son of Jerim, which was the son of Mat Mat that, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Simon, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Jonan, which was the son of Elikim, which was the son of Mel 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 Mele, which was the son of Menon, which was the son of Matha, which was the son of Nathan, which was the son of David, which was the son of Jesse, which was the son of Obed, which was the son of Boaz, which was the son of Solomon, which was the son of Naasan, which was the son of Aminadab, which was the son of Aaron, Aram, which was the son of Ezra, which was the son of Pharis, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Jacob, which was the son of Isaac, which was the son of Abraham, which was the son of Pharah, which was the son of Nature, which was the son of Saruk, which was the son of Ragal, which was the son of Phalak, which was the son of Heber, which was the son of Salah, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Arphaxad, which was the son of Sim, which was the son of Noe, which was the son of Lamech, which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Malilil, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Whew! They did the whole lineage all the way back to Adam. <laughs> Man. That's a lot of generations. A lot of generations that passed. Um, before Jesus was born. Alright, so good morning. This is a year in the Bible. A daily Bible reading. Where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. Um, and we are going to read 
uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones that it be made bread. Excuse me. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, it is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Amen. So that this loop, you want to go back and study because it's, during the times of temptation is giving you what to answer and respond. So it's good to have that written in your heart, mind, and soul. What to say. And, and notice the devil is showing here that he knew the words of God too. He knew. He knows the words of God too. So you got to be very, very careful in this day. Of who comes, who speaks into your life, who, because you could be being tempted by the devil and you want to study this so you can know how to respond and what to say. It should just be in your heart, mind, and soul, and you should be able to quickly answer the devil, tell him, get thee behind thee, and, and know how to answer so go back and study this. Study it. Let it write itself up on the tablets of your heart, your mind, and your soul. And, and, and stay equipped. This is how you stay equipped. This is how you uh, know for sure that you'll have the weapons of warfare. By staying in the word of God every single day. Um, you will know that you are carrying the weapons of warfare and then you ask the Lord God to teach you how to use the weapon teach you how to respond and teach you how to to retain and write the words of God upon the tablet of your heart uh, and pretty much being um, covered in the whole armor of God every single day every single day because the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy every day. He does not sleep. He does not slumber. He's every day on his job to try to come, kill, steal, and destroy. So you want to stay in the words of God every single day. And I'm, I'm going to continue to say this over and over. 
because it needs to resonate. It needs to write itself upon the tablets of your heart. It needs to become a natural thing for you to want to pick up the Bible and spend time with the Lord and um, and grow and mature and let him give you insight, understanding, increasing knowledge and wisdom. That's what we want. We want to have that intimate, deep, meaningful relationship with the Lord God where he comes and, and speak to us even in an audible voice where we can clearly hear him. We want we that's the type of relationship we want with the Lord God. So continue to train your ears to hear his voice. Train your eyes to see what he wants you to see. And uh and just be just rest in him, love on him cuz he's loving on you and uh and 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 be great cuz that's what he's doing. He's making you into greatness. So wear that whole armor of God today and every day henceforth every day moving forward staying in the words of God and don't forget to share, tag and invite because you want your whole circle everybody that surrounds you every day co-workers Sisters, brother, cousins, it doesn't matter. You want your whole circle to be getting into the words of God every single day. So don't forget to invite, share, and tag. To come on every morning at 530. Even if you're tired, we're going to do this and we're going to get through this together. Because this is awesome and amazing. And uh, we can do this. So I love you all. Thank you for those who are coming on every morning. Thank you for your obedience to the Lord God Almighty. You're not obeying me. You're obeying him because he wants you to get into the words of God every single day. And so I thank you um, for your obedience to the Lord God Almighty and staying in it, sticking it in with me. Um, I just I, I truly am grateful. And so I love you all. You have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, blessed day on purpose. And I'll see you 5.30 in the morning.